Turn your Bibles to Joshua 1.3. I am starting and sort of continuing from spiritual warfare into a topic called the believer's victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joshua 1.3 says this. Says Moses, my servant, that's two. Says Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I'm giving to them, the children of Israel. Every, every place, say every place. Every. Say every place. Ah, oh, come on, say every place. every place. That the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, to the great sea, toward, toward the going down of the sun. Say, going down of the sun. Say, going down of the sun. Shall be your territory. No man, say no man, shall be able to stand before you all the days. Say all the days. Say all the days. All the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you, nor will I forsake you. Be strong. Say, be strong. And of good courage. For this people you shall divide. The Lord starts speaking over Joshua. He says, every place your foot treads upon, I will give to you. Not just today, but all the days of your life. Say, all the days of your life. Say, all the days of my life. Say, all the days of my life. Let's just close our eyes. Father, Lord, I just thank you for your presence here. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for your blessing over us. I thank you for your protection. I thank you for your provision. I thank you that you love us, Lord. All the days of our lives that you are with us, Lord. Whether we go to the left or whether we go to the right, you will speak to us saying, this is the way, walk in it, Lord. I thank you that we are more than conquerors, that we are victorious, Lord. I thank you that we are your children, Lord. And no enemy, no weapon formed against us shall ever prosper, that we are victorious. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we declare it. Amen. Holy Spirit, have your way here. The Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Joshua 1.3, the Lord speaks and says, I will be with you. Be of good courage. Be strong. Say, 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 be of good courage. Be of good courage. Be strong. Be strong. We all love a word of prophecy. How many of us love a word of prophecy? When the Lord comes to us and says, listen, Preeti, I will be with you. And we're like, amen. Amen. The Lord says, I will give you the land. I will give you the city. I will give you the country. I will give you the nations. And we're like, yes, amen. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. And we get excited. We are so excited. To Joshua, the Lord spoke and said, I will give you this land till the end, till where the sun sets, till the horizon. I will give you the land. And then the battle began. And then the battle began. If you look at Joshua, the, the, you look at Joshua, he goes into Jericho. He goes into Ai. He fights against the king of Bashan. He fights against King Sihon. He keeps fighting. There are battles and there are battles and there are battles. Even before the battle starts, they find a river that they cannot cross. And they can only cross it through the anointing of the Lord God Almighty. And they cross over to the other side. They cross over not because of their strength, but because God is with them. From the very moment they received the promise, they had to catch on to God. They had to hold on to God to every stage. They set out saying, my God is with me. Though none go with me, my God is with me. They're going. They come to a river. And when they get to the river, they can't cross. Till they seek God and God says, send forth the priests. Let them step in. I will divide this river. And they cross over. They cross over, but it does not end there. And as they cross over, they understand that the battle has just begun. And the scripture says they encounter God. They encounter the Lord of the hosts. The, 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 the army, the commander of army, the commander of the Lord, of the army of the Lord, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. They encounter God. For us, if we encounter God, we would think that's it. 
How many, of, have you, how many of us have encountered God and we're rejoicing? We come into the presence of the Lord and we enjoy it and we rejoice in it. Every encounter is for a purpose. Every encounter, every prophecy, it is for a purpose. It is so that the kingdom of God is established here on earth. So that his will is done on earth as it is in heaven. So we enter in. Into the presence of God. I love this. In Joshua 5.13. And says it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho. That he lifted his eyes. Say he lifted his eyes. eyes. Say he lifted his eyes. Before the day of the battle. This young man. He lifts his eyes to God. He lifted his eyes and looked. Sometimes we need to look. And behold a man. Capital M. Stood opposite to him with a sword, sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said, Are you for us or our adversaries? And he said, No. But as Jesus is this, he establishes his identity. As commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. As the victorious one, I have now come. I am no longer the lamb. I am the commander of the army. I have come to give my people victory. I have come to give my people every strength that is required. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped. This is our only appropriate response to our God. Fall on our face and worship. 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 And And it says, what does my Lord say to his servant? Saying, God, not my will, but your will be done. He falls down and he says, the commander of the army said to Joshua, take off your sandal for this place where you stand is holy. He's saying the place where you have encountered me, it is holy. Respect it, honor it, keep it of high value. For us, we've had encounter upon encounter and we forget to keep it holy. We forget to keep it of value. And the Lord says, place of encounter, respect, keep it holy, keep it holy. And they step into battle. And one battle does not look like the other. They step into Jericho. And the walls come tumbling down. They thought, now it's going to be smooth sailing. And they come across I. And they fail. And then they regroup and God, you know what? God wants his people to have victory. So he says, this is the problem. They deal with it. And then they step into battle again. And even nature stands still. The scripture says the sun stood still. It says the sun stood still. I was reading a scientific survey. This was about 10 years ago. And scientists themselves say there is an anomaly For the number of hours that this said, that the book of Joshua says, there's an anomaly some 5,000 years ago. That the sun stood still. And the sun stood still. This is what he did for Joshua in the Old Testament. This is what he will do for us. And the scripture says they go on to fight the Amalekites. They go on to fight Bashan. They go on to fight. And this is what I am telling the church today. The Lord has spoke to us. And this is what we are saying. The kingdom of God is at hand. We have been prophesied over saying we will get this city. We will see this country come to the knowledge of God. We are seeing this, but we cannot in any way get disheartened because we won Jericho and it looks like we're losing eye. Because it's, a, it's not won in, in a day, it's in a lifetime. We are here in this battle for this world in, for a lifetime. Someone nudge somebody and say, for a lifetime. Say, for a lifetime. Say, for a lifetime. Turn your Bibles to Joshua 21, verse 43.
It says here, so the Lord. Come on. Someone say, so the Lord. Someone say, so the Lord. Listen to this now. Gave to Israel all the land of which he had sworn to give their fathers. And they took possession of it and dwelt in it. The Lord gave. Say, the Lord gave. And they took. Oh, come on. They took possession of it and they dwelt in it. They dwelt in it. And the Lord gave them rest. Say, the Lord gave them rest. Say, the Lord gave them rest. The, the Lord does not give us rest on the day of Jericho or the day of Ai or the day of Bashan or the day of Sihon or the day of the Amalekites or the day of the Midianites. But the day of rest will come. We are here for a battle. We are here to establish the kingdom of God and it is a lifetime. This life I live, I live for Christ who died for me. It is my lifetime. It is not for a day. It's not for a decade. It's not for three decades. It's for a lifetime. We are here to fight for a lifetime. And the scripture says, Joshua 23. Oh, I love, wait, sorry. I'm going to read verse 45 of 21. And not a word failed. Say, not a word. Not a word. Failed of any good thing which the Lord has spoken to the house of Israel. All came to pass. Say, all came to pass. Say, all came to pass. This is the believer's victory. Now, I want to fight this battle, and I want to tell you how to fight this battle. Most of us are fighting this battle from Jericho to Ai to Bishon to Sihon, and we're just fighting day by day for this day I live. But that is not how we should fight. We should fight knowing that every word that God has promised, every word, every promise, everything is yes and amen in Christ, and that we have the victory. That it shall come to pass. And this is our truth. That we have won. And we will find our rest. Knowing this truth. Fight that battle. Fight the battle of Jericho. Fight the battle of Ai. Fight the battle of Bashan. Fight the battle of the Midianites. Fight the battle of the Amalekites. Fight knowing we have won. Knowing that the kingdom of God will be established. Knowing that revival will come to the city. Knowing that as for me and my household, we will serve Yahweh. And better is a city that the Lord builds than a city that God has not even stepped into. That one of us can change the destiny of this place. Are you with me? Know this and fight the battle. The church cannot walk around defeated just when they come across I. We speak about the battle of last month. We speak about the battle of last year. And we think that was just one battle. You who? We are fighting battles on many forefronts. Are you with me? And Understand, don't give up. I'll tell you why. Ask me why. Because the Lord says this in Joshua 23. Verse 2, he says, Joshua saying this, he says, I am old, advanced in age. That means he fought a lifetime. I didn't say it, Joshua said it. You know? So, in the army of God, Retirement is death. You guys are serious. Yes. Amen. Look at this. Verse 8. He says, Joshua's advanced in age and he's speaking to the next generation. And he says, you hold fast. To the Lord your God, as you have done this day. That means, till the end of your days, hold fast to the promises. Hold fast. Because if you don't, the enemy will take the land. For the Lord has driven out from before you great and strong nations. 
It does not matter how big or how strong an, a culture or a, a or ideology that is coming after you or coming and blocking you. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. And he says, but as for you, no one shall be able to stand against you this day. Decades before the Lord spoke to a young man called Joshua and said, where you set your foot on, I will give you. 20 chapters later, he, we find that the Lord has given him the land. And because he took a stand, his whole tribes got a land. They got their inheritance. Now he speaks to the next generation and says, hold fast. Hold fast. Because if you hold fast unto God, no one will be able to stand against you. And he says, if one can make a thousand flee. He says, one man of you shall chase a thousand. For the Lord your God is he who fights for you as he promised. So imagine two of us can make 10,000 flee. Three can make 100,000 flee. It does not matter how many. For our God is greater. Our God is greater. Are you with me, church? We have victory. At a time of great defeat, and I'm laying a foundation here. At a time of great defeat, the Lord turns up to Gideon in Judges chapter 6. And he says, oh, mighty man of valor. And Gideon turns around and goes, who? Goes, who? And the Lord says, you. And in the words of Rambo, goes, Mia. Says, you are. Mia. You are. Mia. You are. And that's us. The Lord comes to us and says, you will take the land. Mia. You are. And, and then we get this and we're like, yeah. We go to the pastor and we say, Ah, the Lord says, I will give you the city. And the pastor's like, yeah. He says, this pastor doesn't understand how great I am. You know? And that's how we are. Well, the pastor don't understand. He gave me England. Oh, okay. This pa you know, and we're like that. And we're, he gave me South Africa. He gave me Zimbabwe. He gave me this. And the pastor still don't understand. And he goes to you, oh, mighty man of valor. And the spirit of the Lord is upon you. And you're like, Yes. And you know what he had to do next? He had to fight a battle. He had to fight a battle. And this is where the problem lies. We love to hear the words of prophecy. And we understand that our God is great. But when we come across the battles that we need to face and win, we're not equipped or we get disheartened. Victory is after a battle. Victory is after a battle. Conquering is overcoming something. You conquer something. And each one of us, the scripture says here in the Old Testament, that each one of us has been given land. And this it's up to, we have to step in, know the beginning from the end, and fight the victory. Because if you don't fight the victory, you will be stuck in a rut. You will be stuck in a rut. Doing the same Christian things over and over and over again. And our battle is not against flesh and blood. Often our battle is against our own very character and nature. The very things that define us. Are you with me? We are unable to overcome what we've been indoctrined, what has been indoctrined into our lives. Look at Ephesians 1, 15 to 17. Turn your Bibles there.
It says, therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, say, heard of my faith. And your love for all the saints. Say, my love for all God's people. Did not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom, revelation, and understanding, and knowledge of him. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, say, the eyes of my understanding may be enlightened, that I may know what is my hope in his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards me who believes according to the working of his mighty power? Paul is now speaking to a church that has faith, that has great reputation of faith, that has great love for one another. He's speaking to the church and he's saying, I pray that the eyes of your understanding may be opened. Lay your ha hands upon your, your, your physical eyes. Come on. And say, Lord, I pray that you open the eyes of my understanding. That my eyes may be enlightened. That I may know the hope of your calling. What is your riches of glory of your inheritance in me, Lord? Open my eyes. 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 You know, when we're born again, we are translated into the kingdom of God. You know what happens when something gets translated? It just gets, I, the, it just gets completely, I think another word is, I would say you get transferred. You're moved from one reality into another reality. Are you with me? And as a result of this, our lives are governed by new realities. Our lives, let me say it again, our lives should be governed by new realities. And these realities should change or shape the kind of person we are. People always ask, how do you get into victory? You know, I was sharing with the, with the, with the church, uh, with the kids earlier, you know. We spoke about how we, you know, Romans 12, 1 says this. It says, By, we offer our bodies as a living, sac uh, as a living sacrifice, Okay. And there must be a transformation of our mind. We understand what is a good, perfect, and acceptable will of our God. But there's a renewal of our minds that need to take place. So the church must have a change. And the minute we start speaking about change, and this is what concerns me because we are like, what change more? Why change more? How do I change more? What does this change mean? What is the reality? And I want to speak about the realities that face us today. If you look at it, I mean, in the last 10 years, if you look at statistics, less people own houses. Many people are coming out of universities and unable to get jobs. Families are breaking up at exponential numbers. Children who, kids who used to get, get married and settled by their late 20s or early 30s, not happening now. The reality of the world is quite depressing, isn't it? And as Christians, it's tough to be in this world. Because what we believe and what we are taught is totally contrary to what is happening out there. And 
we're not seeing kingdom realities in the government. But when in the history of the church has there been kingdom realities in governments? When the church was first birthed, the government disliked it. Why was Paul in jail? The government disliked it. Why was Peter in jail? The government disliked it. Why are we as a church crying because the government dislikes what we're speaking? Are you with me? There are certain kingdom realities that we must be aware of. And the reality is the truth that we believe. What you truly believe is your reality. If I believe that I am wealthy, then I am. You can try and convince me that I'm poor, but I won't believe it. You might have more money than me. You might have better houses than me, better cars than me, but I still won't believe it. You'll come and tell me there's more, and I'll be like, no. I'm happy. I'm wealthy. And the toughest thing to do is to change our perspective of reality. And the believer's victory really is to understand truth. God spoke to Joshua and said, honey, I'm not just with Moses, I am with you. It says, where you step, darling, I will give you that land. So go step somewhere. It says, don't be afraid. Be of good courage. Go do something. And in what you do, I will prosper you. And he goes. And seven days he walks around Jericho. And there was no prosperity. People were sitting on the walls and laughing and shouting at him. For some of us, it's seven years around the walls of Jericho. But the end result is this. We have victory. We have victory. Because God is for me, not against me. And if the church understands this, we will not be sad. We will not be grumpy. But we will be shouting. We will be exulting. Because we know that we are victorious. Are you with me? I am sick of the enemy lying to me through my circumstances. I am sick of the enemy telling me through my health. I am sick of the enemy telling me through my, my situations that I might not be walking in blessing. Because he does not determine my destiny. He does not determine my future. He does not determine my victory. My God does. And my God is for me. And no one can stand against me. He takes one house from me, I will take seven. He takes one car. If he doesn't put it back, I will take seven. For every dishonor, I will get double honor. This is my victory. This is my knowledge. This is my reality, church. He tries to shut me up. I will shout. I will shout. He makes my voice go. I will dance. He hurts my feet. I will jump. He is not going to keep this Christian down. He is not going to keep this Christian down because my reality is this. I am my father's daughter. And it should be your reality. It should be your reality. The church has to get up. The church has to know. Have the eyes of our understanding opened. We don't get one answered prayer and we get disheartened. We don't get two answered prayer. He don't love me anymore. That's not how it works. The word says he loves me. I believe it. The word says I am the beloved of the Lord. I believe it. The word says do not rejoice over me, my enemy. I believe it. For if I fall, I will rise. Change your reality truths. 
Are you with me? Are you with me? But for this, how do you understand? How do you get to this? You must have the kingdom rule of God in your life. Turn your Bibles to Luke 17, 20 to 21. It says, now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come. So the Pharisees go to Jesus and say this. He says, Jesus, when does the kingdom of God come? What does that mean? Today when we read this, we think of heaven, isn't it? Isn't it? No. The Pharisees were expecting a political Messiah. Are you with me? Is the heat bothering you? Well, like I said earlier, God saved us from a worse heat. Okay? So thank you, Jesus. And when we get a new building, how many of you are praying for the new building? Yeah? Yeah? We're going to get it at the end of this year. Hallelujah. Okay, and when we get that, we're going to centrally see it. In faith. Okay? And then we're going to pray, God, don't let our fire grow cold. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have five days of summer. Enjoy it. Hallelujah. There is no place like England when the sun comes out. It's one of the most beautiful countries in the world. And God has ordained it for us. Thank you, Jesus. So we're thankful for the five days of summer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I heard some people singing last week, let it rain, you know, open the flood, because it was hot, you know, so uh, Luke 17, 20 to 21, now he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come. These were religious people, these Pharisees, they knew the word. They knew the rules. They knew the legalism. They knew everything. But they, didn't, they could not know God. They could not recognize God. They did not have a heart for the things of God. And these Pharisees went up and said, when the kingdom of God would come, what they were waiting for was a political messiah. Why? Why? They wanted a land where God's rule would take place. They wanted thy kingdom come. Are you with me? They wanted a place where God's rule, the land was governed by God's rule. And Jesus answered and said to them, he said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. Nor will they say here or there. That means it does not come from following a Simple rules or legalism. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. Or the rule of God is within you. And let me explain it to me, to you, in the way I understand. If you say, this is the kingdom of the, the United Kingdom. Say, so this is the kingdom of the queen. Whose rule takes place there? The queen's. If I take this much land and I rule there, whose rule is that? It's mine. It's no longer the kingdom of the queen. Right or wrong? And that is the kingdom reality. So if I'm standing here and I say, that this is the place of the rule of the king of the king of kings and the lord of lords if i say this is the place of the rule of god this becomes the kingdom of god this becomes the kingdom of god why because god's rule is here our father who art in heaven 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom of God, the rule of the kingdom is here. And therefore, when I step in, therefore the kingdom is here. Greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. Because the king is in me. I am more than a conqueror. Why? The king is in me. And I am under the rule of the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Are you with me? So here it says, he says, the kingdom of God is within you. We are the kingdom. We are the land that God purchased. On that cross of Calvary, he redeemed this land. He redeemed and paid the price for this land. I am the land that God purchased. And this is the place of his rule and his kingdom. Are you with me? John the Baptist came into this land. He said, the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. And when, and when Jesus came in, he says, the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. John the Baptist announced the kingdom. Jesus inaugurated it. John's ministry prepared the way for the kingdom. Jesus is the way of the kingdom. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. Are you with me? This is kingdom reality. He spoke to Joshua and he said, Where you go, I will go. Why? Kingdom rule. 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 Where you go, I go. Kingdom rule. Kingdom rule. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom of heaven is within you. The kingdom of heaven is within you. The kingdom of heaven is within you. Kingdom reality. Kingdom rule. Are you with me? Are you with me? Colossians 1.13 says this. For he has rescued us from the one who rules the kingdom of darkness. And he has brought us into the kingdom of his dear son. Before we got saved, my kingdom reality was the kingdom of Satan. The kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of sin. The kingdom of unforgiveness. The kingdom of illness. The kingdom of sickness. The kingdom of darkness, loss, death, lies. And he picked me up and translated me into the kingdom of light, into the kingdom of prosperity, into the kingdom of authority, in the kingdom of privilege, into the kingdom of purpose, into the kingdom of hope, into the kingdom of health, into the kingdom of, of, of prosperity and every good thing. I am under the rule of the king. And no enemy prevails against the kingdom of God. If you know who you are and who possesses this land, you are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Are you understanding me? This is kingdom reality. We need to know who we are and we need to stand up and we need to take some land because this is ours. This needs to be our kingdom reality. I don't care if I have to walk around Jericho for seven days. I might be going around in circles to the rest of the world. But every step, I am winning a victory. Every praise, I'm bringing down a wall. Every time I take a step forward in faith, the land belongs to me. Hallelujah. Are you with me? I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Do not think I'm speaking from a place where I've had 
every victory in the last one week or in the last one month. The enemy has thrown illness at me. He has thrown disease. He has thrown insecurity. He has taken away house after house after house after house. And I tell you something, I don't care because this lamb belongs to my father. And I'm not only fighting for me, I'm fighting for this city. I have this city in the name of Jesus. This city will stand for Christ. This city is going to be for Christ. And not only me, but every person in this church will own house upon house upon house. I declare it. Not only me, but all of us shall have prosperity in our workplace. In our places of work, we will be at the top and never at the bottom. We will win this. We will win this. We will win this season. Because this is our God and this is our victory. Are you with me? Are you with me, church? Because the enemy's been defeated and death couldn't hold him down. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I am not shaped by the culture I was born into. I am shaped by heaven. You and I are shaped by heaven. I don't care what the test results say. I don't care what the surveys say. I don't care what the reports say. I have one report and that is from God Almighty. And it says I am victorious in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. What is my, the Lord is shaking us of what is our identity. If it's our job, he's shaking us. If it's our salaries, he's shaking us. If it's our house, he's shaking us. If it's our marriages, he's shaking us. If it's our relationship, he's shaking us. If it's our friendship, he's shaking us. If it's our character, he's shaking us. Why? He's bringing us to solid ground. He's bringing us to solid ground because no job will stand in eternity. No position will stand in eternity. No marriage will stand except the marriage to the Lamb. Hallelujah. I'm standing on solid ground. We have been through whirlwinds. We have been through the storm. And I'm not even saying it's finished. But I don't care. Because I know who is in my boat. The one who calms the seas. The one who will take me to the other side. Either I will walk on water. Or the water will become plain. And I will cross over. Are you with me? There are two which ways I can go. I'm going to the other side. Either the Red Sea way or the Sea of Galilee way. I am crossing over. I am crossing over. I am crossing over. I ask. I am crossing over. Come on, someone. I'm crossing over. Hallelujah. I am crossing over. You know, I look around. I see empty chairs. And I know because of the season. And I look around and I see chairs full. I know because I know where you're standing. I know where you're standing. You're standing on solid ground. Solid ground. Solid ground. We started this house with three people. And it is not the numbers that ever matter. For one can make a thousand flee. If God is with me. But we are going to get passionate. We're going to change our reality. What does your life revolve around today? What are the things? Have a look. 
This season was a good look for me. You know, I was, you know me, I'm super confident. I'm the type who stands in front of a house and I say, Lord, give this to me. And he does. I'm the type who stands in front of a house that is not on sale and say, God, can I have this? And he gives it to me. I came to a season where I stood in front of penthouses and said, give it to me. And now estate agents are feeling sorry for me because they don't even understand. But whether the fig tree blossoms or the vile mine yield no fruit, yet we will praise Yahweh. Because we know where our strength is. We know where our strength is. And that's what I'm trying to say. When I stand up here, many people think that everything is A-OK -okay in my life. That it is easy. It isn't. But we are here not because whether our season is abounding or whether our season is less. It does not matter what season we will praise Yahweh. And it does not matter what is happening. The kingdom reality is, I have won. I have won. I have won. This is my reality. And we need to show forth in our expressions. We need to find our joy. The Lord has asked us to be like little children. Why? Because children show their joy. I remember the first time, I, I've said this story, but when I was in Dubai, one of the first babies that was born into the church, the sweetest little, sweetest little baby, and it was two and a half months old, and the mother had to go to a, a job interview and left the baby in our care. No. I was eating chocolate, and um, I, I, the baby looked at me like, what you eating? I mean, I understand baby, okay? And I said, what you eating? And I said to the baby, chocolate. Baby said, what be that? And the, I said, a very good thing. You like it. Baby girl, so definitely would like it, okay? <laughs> so the baby looked at me. Can I have some? Can you say no to a baby? Huh? So I took some chocolate and gave it to the baby. Baby will. I've never seen a reaction like that. The baby goes, whoa! It's like, whoa! And Nestle's been prosperous. Cadbury's been prosperous since then. No. Kid goes, whoa! Has a taste of it. And I take it away because it was my chocolate. Okay? And I put it in my mouth. I finish it because I want to be good. And the child starts drooling. Water comes down, becomes drool master. Okay, just drooling and drooling. And uh, this friend of ours, he walks into the kitchen and he sees his baby drooling. And, you know, it was a tin of quality stream. So he takes the chocolate and the baby's going, <gasps> and, the, and this, 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 this brother, he just knows what the baby wants because the desire was so evident. The baby did not speak English, Hindi, Italian, Tamil, uh, Afrikaans, none of them. But in that baby's sheer expressions and actions, you could see the attitude and the desire of that child's heart. It was chocolate. The scripture says, taste and see that the Lord is good. And when we come into the house of the Lord, the Lord, when Joshua encountered him, the commander of the army of hosts, said, honor this place, respect it, value it, show the place as a place of kingdom reality. Are you with me? Are you with me? What does our life revolve around? 
Because if we don't understand what, what, what is shaping us, what is the center of our life, we're going to go around in circles with no victory. But if we walk with the purpose and the destiny of God, the walls that surround our cities will come down. Are you with me? We are born into the kingdom of God. We are the kingdom of God. Where the ambassador of God is, that land becomes the national place of the ambassador. And we are called ambassadors of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. I want you now. To understand that you are victorious. Whatever you're going through. Know the end. I don't know the steps that you will take to get there. I don't know the path that will lead you to victory. But whatever path you take, when you are in Christ, it will work out for your good. That is a kingdom reality. Hallelujah. And someone asked me recently, you are jumping more than you usually do. You know why? I am hungrier than I usually do am. Salvation belongs to God. And I will praise him in and out of season. That is our first step to kingdom reality. That he is worthy of praise. Whether the fig tree blossoms or your fruit is coming. Whatever it is, he is worthy of worship. So the first step of our kingdom reality of a believer's victory is to get hungry and step into it. So I want to invite the worship team back. We've got another five minutes. I'm going to shout. You may have different ways of expressing your victory. But I'm going to shout. Because I am going to see the walls around this city come down. And as the team comes back up, I want you to just close your eyes. And now I want you to pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, open the eyes of my understanding to your kingdom realities. Open the eyes of my understanding to your kingdom realities. I know you have said you are with me, that wherever I go, I carry your blessing, and I am a blessing, that I am blessed, that I am more than victorious in you, Lord. Open my eyes to understand the spiritual realm, to understand the battles I'm fighting in the spirit. For I know I do not fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, dominions in dark and high places, Lord. Lord, I know you've called me into eternal life, that I will enter into my rest. But in this lifetime, may your kingdom be established in me. Amen.